Membero zangu za zove pedo Muchandi shamba za kunge zigo Ticha kudana iku mabiko Ladies and gentlemen, a very very good afternoon to you Wherever that you are watching this video from Thank you for joining me today On this very 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 special edition Of this, we are used to politics And this is the Jairapa platform But today we are going to divert A little bit Tombo Pinda Mo Music And I've got an expert here Mnoza shona edu ne chulu nguche edu so shunu ita kakumik sana so pound out expect, no gonna expect, kao no gonna expect, but I think you just let me go get away with it. I've got an expect here in music issues, his name is Sekuru Gudo, Sekuru Gudo Pikicha, Sekuru Gudo Pikicha. <laughs> thanks, Welcome. thanks very much Mr. Zigo, it's such an honor to be on this platform. Uh, I would like to say I really enjoy uh, the videos that you make uh, about politics and social issues. They are such eye-opening. Yes, and the symbolism on your table. <laughs> uh, what inspires okay, your Okay, as you can see, these are uh, carved uh, baboons from wood. I bought them from a, from a Kenyan here and, uh, <clears throat> where I live. Uh, this is my totem. Uh, so this is a baboon. Uh, this is a baboon again. So this is a female baboon, and this is a male baboon. So it's it's all has to the has to do with my totem. And how do you know that this is a this female is and brown. this is a male? <laughs> this one is big. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I think I was just trying to be to be naughty. But what inspires the okay, name Sekuru Gudo? Sekuru Gudo, uh, like this name. If you go on social media, you are going to find out there is a lot of people that are using this alias of Sekuru Gudo. Uh, so I had to put a picture in front or after. So what inspired is uh, me is that uh, I am very much fond of my culture, uh, meaning to say Chiva Nuchedu as a uh, black uh, Zimbabwean or as an African. So there was a time that I was, use, I was using this name like uh, Longman. Then I, I had to sit down and think uh, deep about it. What is going to happen when I grow older? So I am growing older, so I have, I have to find, uh, find a name that is going to be accommodative as I grow older. So I went for Sekuru Guru um, Pikicha. Okay, okay, wonderful. Uh, even though you didn't ask me, <laughs> my name Zigo is inspired by my <laughs> real name. <laughs> a lot of people, they make fun of Zigo, Zigo. I wanted Zigo to say Miro. it like Zigo. <laughs> <laughs> but in high school i used to i was so obsessed with my name you know those people who are full of themselves so i would say zigo uh, there's something called zigology so i would say logic is something like a study so i would say ah, zigology is the study of zigo because i always <laughs> imagined that i'll be someone very very great in the future and now here i am I just a I regular think it's youtuber here. itself it's only you that who is not recognizing it but a lot of people looking at the number of your subscribers and the audience that is following you i think it's manifesting itself thank you thank you so much thank you so before we get into the issues that we want to talk about nyaze music is do you have a musical background yeah, I myself, I am a producer, as we speak. I am a photographer. I am a videographer. I do music videos uh, mostly. Uh, if you are to get a, if uh, people are to get a chance uh, to take uh, to hop uh, onto my channel, they will find out that I'm into uh, music. So yeah, I have a lot of uh, background and uh, knowledge. Uh, I have a lot of uh, knowledge uh, on my background about music. And what's really inspires your interest in music what where do you draw that interest oh like it started a long time ago just like everybody else when i was young uh, i wanted to sing and my father used it to own this uh, furniture radio uh, tempest uh, brand which he bought during the days of Wenera in south africa so he was a music man uh, playing those records you know those big ones the the, the vinyls and the smaller ones, which were going uh, running at 35, and the big ones were running, uh, were playing at 33. So we used to step on a small bucket, then we place that record and that uh, to play. So I was exposed to music at a tender age, I can say. Wonderful. It's just the same with me. Uh, I, I actually play a keyboard. I can play a bass guitar. And what I'm doing right now, videography, a lot of people don't know that around 2010, I was already shooting videos in our church, and I think I was form wow. two. 
And that is when I was introduced into videography. But later in the future, I realized that you did have that passion a long time ago and it will manifest at any stage in life. So when we were just having a chat uh, before this call, you were talking about essential things that you need to know, sort of prerequisites that you need to know as a player in the music industry, probably a producer, you are a singer, you are an instrumentalist, and you say there are things, seven things that you need to know in the music industry. Would you just orient me on those issues? Yeah, uh, I am going to contribute from my perspective and my position uh, that I've been playing for so many years, uh, over the years. Uh, I have been a producer, I have been an artist uh, for, I can say, for about 15 years now. So I really I understand, I have come to understood uh, about those positions uh, in the in the team of uh, music production and the music industry. I'm not uh, somebody who went to school for these things, but uh, from experience, I've managed to gather a lot. So there are a few uh, things that I would uh, love to start with because these things are so uh, important, especially uh, when we look at the music industry of today, uh, uh, being uh, participated by the majority of the youths uh, in Zimbabwe. So uh, this uh, music industry of Zimbabwe is like uh, Digido, you know, uh, those uh, swimming pools um, that are many made <laughs> by people who dig pit sand. Yes. Then so people just dive in there but they have no clue what is in there sometimes there are sharp objects sometimes you know you never know maybe there are other dangerous creatures in there so uh, that is what uh, our music industry has become uh, so a lot of artists and uh, mem or players in the industry needs to be aware of what is in there before they jump in. So uh, there, I have a couple of um, things uh, that I think are essential that uh, those players who are thinking of getting into the music industry need to know before they hop in. Uh, so there are certain definitions uh, of players that are are commonly found in the music industry of Zimbabwe, uh, like an artist, uh, we go on to a producer, um, DJs, music promoters, um, and fans, and uh, and those guys who are marketing the, the music as well, uh, things like record labels. So those things are very essential. You need to know them before you, you join the industry. Wonderful. I just thought... As a musician, the only thing that you need to know is how to compose a song and start singing. And just looking at the template of these things that you are saying you need to know, would you just define these people? Because an artist and a musician, I don't even know what is the difference. So would you define those things? Artist, producer, manager, promoter, and why is it important to know who is who? Okay, so looking at the industry of today in Zimbabwe, uh, most people who are participating there, most of them didn't even finish their academics, like uh, they didn't finish some levels at school, like all level. Some didn't even uh, went up to grade seven. So I am going to be explaining this in layman's terms, so that everybody who get to understand. I'm not going to use those uh, that vocabulary just to confuse or to be shiny on your channel, Zico, because <laughs> <laughs> I wish yes, uh, all yes. those people who give lectures on, on stuff, even politics, could just explain things in layman's terms, because those voters and those participants, they are just ordinary Zimbabwean or ordinary people, so they need to understand uh, very clearly. So... Yeah, but but just to holding you, the ordinary Zimbabweans, I feel like they actually love that type of style. You know, we now have Ostalo Sisiba, and you will be giving those. <laughs> <laughs> and Zeke is now in a fragment, Dilacto, and people will be. <laughs> so they like it. So one way or the other, you can put yeah, those. Yeah, <laughs> when you are, when you, are, you know, when you are, are doing that amongst your other colleagues that you are on the same level of academic uh, academics with it makes sense but when you are trying to communicate to the masses who are just ordinary people who support uh, the things that we do uh, on the upper level you need to go as low 
as lower yes. as you can so that uh, they get to understand you and uh, make use of the yes. information that you'll be imparting on them. So I'm going to be starting by an artist. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick run uh, because uh, of time. So an artist is, uh, this is this is my definition, please. Since I am a self-proclaimed music professor, I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> an artist uh, is somebody uh, who writes, um, who's got the art to, 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 to sing. So uh, an artist will write a song, after writing the song, the artist will rehearse it. Sometimes he will get a song from a songwriter, or he can buy, or he can be given for free, depending on the relationships in there. But uh, after acquiring or coming up with a song, an artist uh, will need to go and see a producer, uh, or will need to go to the studio. Um, so uh, when uh, the artist uh, goes to the studio, he's going to meet a producer, who is going to help in in, in making the, the song manifest or uh, the song become a reality. Uh, like the producer, like the producers of today, we have uh, beat makers who can actually produce a beat or make a beat. They are going to find which melodies, which chords to use on the lyrics and the melody that you have come up with. So... The likes, Oskids, the likes of the Oskid, uh, the likes of levels, the levels... Uh, and a lot of other unknown guys are doing great work out there. So those guys... And, and a, a producer can also be yeah, an artist. Yeah, just like me, I'm an artist as well. Which is a double, oh, okay. uh, it's like a double beggar. <coughs> <laughs> so, oh, you, you, if okay. you're an artist, uh, if you have... Uh, uh, your song that you have written, you need to approach the studio. There you find a producer who is going to make a beat and record you, track the vocals, mix the vocals, and, you know, master the music. Sometimes this production work is divided or it's shared among us. Uh, three people, like somebody who, they, uh, between the beat maker, then uh, the producer who is going to track the vocals, then uh, there's a mixing engineer, then uh, they can be a mastering engineer as well. So as an artist, you need to know that level or those people or those players in the music uh, uh, in the music production chain. So uh, moving from there, uh, after the song has been recorded, uh, you need to be uh, under someone who is going to be talking for you such that you don't lose, lose your, <coughs> your, your, how do I say, your dignity or your value as you negotiate with other uh, players. So that's where the manager come in or comes in. Somebody will be managing uh, you uh, or talking in your position to other players. Uh, so the manager is the one who is going to be talking to people like promoters, looking for shows for you um, and sponsors. So you need also to know that there must be a manager if you are taking this job serious because the manager will be the mouthpiece of you as an artist. So it is very important to have someone like that uh, in your career. So I've also mentioned about um, uh, promoters and sponsors. So I'll start with sponsors. Sponsors, these are guys who just love what you are doing. They don't intend to benefit anything from you. They are the guys who just splash money on you and say uh, men or young men or whatever. It depends. If you are with those big ones like Nikki, Oh. <laughs> these guys they don't they don't need anything from you they don't need anything from you they just love your art so they splash money they can give you a car or they can borrow you a car you know like what they normally do to uh, to our zimbabwean zim dance or brothers they say ah he's got a car he's Bina. got a car but the truth is they they are borrowed cars <laughs> Okay, okay. Publicity stands. <laughs> yeah. So those are the sponsors. You need to know them and differentiate them also uh, from the promoters. The promoters are the big guys in the industry. They organize the shows. They uh, make the flyers, you know, look for a venue, uh, bring, you, uh, bring together a couple of artists so that you can do a show. Then you split the outcome. So uh, these are the, the, the promoters are in the game for money. They don't play those guys. So you need to know them as an artist as well. Uh, like the, most of like the info information promotion. that I'm saying here is very important to an artist. Mm. 
Exactly. Mm. Because uh, I'm saying this because I've uh, come to see that a lot of Zimbabwean artists, they don't have time to learn about uh, these players and what do they uh, and the position that they play in the industry. So people get up quitting music. People get up, uh, end up uh, blaming uh, other people for things that they are not responsible for them for. for. So it is important for for the art, for an artist to know about these players. So from the promoters, we go on to the DJs. These are the guys that are working at the radio, working in the clubs. They play your music to a large audience. Now, you need to know uh, the purpose of the DJs uh, in the music business as well and what do they uh, want for them to play your music or to put your music out there. Sometimes uh, they want to be paid. Sometimes you have to submit like to the radio stations and all that stuff. It just goes differently according to people. So from there, we go to the uh, audience, which is the people or the fans that are listening to your music. So you need to also to know that those people play a very big part in your uh, in your music career if you are going to make it a career or take it serious. I see. I see. I was saying that I thought the sponsors are those who get you access to go into the UK. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of artists make a, make mistakes there where they think a, a producer is supposed to sponsor them or uh, do things for free. Uh, because when you do things for free, you are a sponsor. You, become, you automatically become a sponsor. So they expect a manager to give them money, you know, to, to give them money to buy clothes and all those fancy stuff, of which that is not the job for them, uh, for the manager or for, for the producer. You need to know these definitions and keep them in your head always. And then what is a music label? A music label um, is, um, uh, now we are at an uh, advanced stage uh, in the music business. Uh, it might be an individual, uh, it might be a company or an organization that has decided uh, to promote artists or to promote talent. So what these guys do is, they discover talent in the street or wherever they discover you. Then they take you, they brand you. Uh, uh, you know, they can take you to the studio. You don't pay. They pay for all those uh, costs. But at the end of the day, they want to make money out of you. So uh, those guys are not playing. Also, they are in for it. Uh, they are in for money when they, uh, when they are working with you. They are not well wishers. When you start making it, they will no. take back their earnings. Uh, yeah, some exa <laughs> some examples of those are of music labels. Like one successful music label that I know in Zimbabwe is Chill Sport. Uh, Chill Sport is one of them. Those guys, they take you, they prune you, you know, they clean you up, you know, they put some spice on you. Then you go out there and start shining. But you need to know that those guys are going to need. Uh, <laughs> profits from you. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see, I see. You know, music has changed uh, from the time that we were very young. We used to listen to tapes from Grammar Records, what, what, and it has changed so much. And one of the topical issues where people are really concerned about is money, money, money. How would you make money now in this modern day? Because I saw a post where Silent Killer was actually saying, you know, Silent Killer is trending right now. And you are saying, I now have a YouTube account. Come and subscribe in Dimboj Gao. You were supposed from, to do that a long time ago, by the way. And the way that he put it in Dimboj Gao. <laughs> <laughs> which created means, a picture which like means it. there's something wrong. Something was going on behind the curtains. Yes. So how do you make money in this modern day? using music and can we actually say that you can make real money using music in this day and age yes these days you can make real money you can make a lot of money there are people who are making money they are not even trending like what silent killer is doing like i have a couple of guys that i know uh you know who are not even trending but they are fully booked all the all the time they are flying uh all over the world making money and doing music so you and, just and need also, to know and also many guys who are trending every day but not making money. <laughs> yeah, like culture love. 
<laughs> I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. okay. Yeah, so okay. so we uh, that is very important. Uh so when you when you become an artist, you need to know like those uh, fundamentals that, that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, a while ago, you need to be knowing all those things. Now you also need to know the uh, the business side of music. So a lot of artists don't know the business side of music. They just get in there to please their friends, you know, to get girls and just to prove a point that I can do this. At the end of the day, they then they start to say, ah, I need to be getting something out of this. But remember, when you get in, you were not expecting anything. So you need to know uh, <clears throat> the, the, the business side of music as well to make money out of it. You need to treat it as business. So it starts with the way that you started it. Uh, if you didn't start it uh, as a business, it's going to be difficult for you to, you know, to, 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 to navigate and to maneuver and turn it into a profiteering business. But if you started as a started it as a as a business, it's not going to be difficult for you. So most people don't start it as a business; they start it as a hobby. Then later on, they want to try to make money out of the wrong songs or the wrong content that they were giving to people or some stuff that, that they sing that is so personal, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's not catchy. Um, it's for yourself. So you cannot make uh, money with things that you did for yourself only. Okay, I understand that this episode is sort of an introductory episode and we are going to just do at surface level and also doing case studies of actual things that are happening in the industry like this one released an album. Can we do a review on it? But just on surface level, where do you think that uh, our music players in Zimbabwe have been doing it wrong? Because for me, usually I don't like focusing on what is right because what is right is always right. Uh, we don't focus on those who are well. We focus on those who need to be treated. So I want us to look at those things that you feel that they were being done wrong. We, which of the things that you look at and you say, we have been doing these things wrong as musical players in Zimbabwe? Yeah, all I can say is uh, the music uh, space in Zimbabwe is just moving the same uh, like what uh, our politics uh, has been doing over the years. So <clears throat> I think that would be um, something to discuss uh, I would, I would love some uh, time to expand on that, but I'm just going to run quick on that one. Uh, looking at uh, the Zimbabwean music industry, right now it's in shambles, to say the truth. Uh, it's not actually operating uh, quite good. Uh, looking at um, artists, they are not actually getting recognized. Uh, we, we have a, a small space uh, for exposure in Zimbabwe. And now you have seen that instead of artists being known on radio stations, now they are being known on social media. Uh, meaning to say, the, the uh, <clears throat> those guys who are into exposing artists uh, are not doing their job, and their job has been taken over uh, by other people. Uh, some of them are professional, some of them are not professional. So that's where the, uh, the most problem is coming from. Also, I would like to talk about people who are promoting uh, music in Zimbabwe. Uh, everybody's promoting music now in Zimbabwe. Everybody's doing it. And some people are not professional. Some people didn't go to school for it. So they are promoting uh, wrong content. They are promoting uh, uh, wrong stuff. So the stuff which is now representing Zimbabwe out there is not proper stuff that uh, should be supposed to be uh, ushered out there. So there are a lot of things uh, to talk about on that. I think if we have time, we would actually go through a lot of stuff on that. And also, we've seen a wave of artists hinting that they want to quit. Whether they are genuine or not, we are not sure, but the objections that they raise they actually something which needs to be paid attention to. Recently, Takura was saying that he wants to quit. Enzo Aishao cried on radio and said he wants to quit. Why do you think that our artist wants to quit and do something else? Yeah, uh, what is happening from my perspective is like, you know, when you look at an uh, artist like Takura, uh, he has been working so hard and Takura is one of the best uh, artists that I regard uh, as for me, and I think in Zim, 
Um, <laughs> recently, you saw these guys who are doing comedy, uh, walking away with the trophy at City Sports. Uh, <laughs> Pogba. <laughs> so when Chakura, when Chakura looks at that, you mm. know, when he looks at that, uh, uh, it's not something uh, to marvel at. Uh, it's not something good. When you when you look at how much you are investing into music and somebody who is doing uh, nothing, just uh, get away, go, go, runs away with the trophy, uh, that is not something to smile at. So I think these guys, they know that they've been sweating for this. They know about the things that they've put out there and they, are, they feel like they are not up, being appreciated. You know, this is why I say the people who are running the industry right now, uh, some of them, they are not running it properly. It's like they are doing it uh, just to, you know, to, to fix some other people to say that, yeah, we are ruling, we are running this thing. And if you don't work by our rules, if you don't bow to us, uh, you are not going to go anyway. So when people like Takura quit, I think they are considering some of those facts that uh, they are seeing happening in the music industry. Yeah, and even if you look at how the mainstream in media, the mainstream media is like now they are competing with social media in giving scandals, comedies, more airtime than yeah. musicians. You see, yeah. it's very easy for you to get airtime on DJ Ola or on any other show in Zimbabwe. If you do a scandal, even if you're a nobody, you can go and be interviewed <laughs> there. But exactly. Uh, if on that uh, uh, even if if you are a very good musician, you will never get the airtime unless maybe there's a scandal that is really a pendant. When you talk about uh, Pogba winning a trophy at a musical festival, it's not something that we should actually applaud. It's something that we should actually be Denounce. known. Yeah, that how could comedians get trophies by doing comedy at a musical show? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, Zigo, looking at uh, what has been happening uh, in Zimbabwe, I think I have, a, I have a conspiracy theory on that. I don't know how you are going to take it. I think uh, a long time ago when people, when, when urban groups was popular back then, there are a certain sect or a certain group of people who wanted to be in the music business, especially from the reggae raga side. And those people were not uh, welcomed. And after some events, after some events that took place in Zimbabwe, those guys managed uh, to, you know, to take the reins. And now they are doing it like to, you know, it's like Wagu Zorera. I don't know if, <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. And yes. there are other people, you know, even at school, and after school, after so many years, those people are successful. So it's like wa kula kukura za uta kuzia one plus one akuna basa. Tisitu kutuonga chini. So those people, uh, academically, they were poor. And in whatever decision that they are making right now, they are making very poor decisions because they just want to go short as I'm going now. Chimoti chache, tisitu kutuonga. This is why you see wangu 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 kita tunjakati yako wangu promote kwa. It's just a chain of, 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 of uh, even from the promoters, even from people who are running uh, uh, the the business the show business on uh in big media houses it's like it's like a generation of those people and now uh, they are in power and it's like wakutonga like the industry this is why i said even the music industry uh of zimbabwe resembles also or reflects the politics in in, in zimbabwe yeah and i relate with that when you say uh Eben Grooves, Zim Danso, Kitangi, sort of a beef. I relate with a song. You know, so Fambanika Lirika knows already. Because what is it? Ah, finishing move. Keku Pedze, Ramadinga, Eben Grooves. And you want to say, there is an invisible fight which is there, not only on artists, but there are other people who wanted to promote or who wanted to run this showbiz. Uh, some years ago, they couldn't get a chance because... Uh, <clears throat> there were other guys who were dominating, but now they are dominating. This is why people promote you know, drugs, people promote all that uh, stuff. It's a comedy, comedy, of which we do not hear yeah, city music. This is no longer uh, music. Uh, this is something else. So, uh, until that generation had to face out here, and the chat on it's a good face out because in Dover, it's Okay, okay. And then you talk 
uh, about something you define as the soldier love syndrome. What is this? The soldier love syndrome. Uh, soldier love. Uh, I don't know uh, if this is going to be controversial or what, but to me, soldier love uh, was not a musician. Please. Soldier Love was not a musician uh, to me. I don't know if this is going to be controversial. Soldier Love was a comedian uh, to me. He was, um, um, what do you call those people who do poems? Uh, poems, uh, we just call them po poets. Yeah, poets. To me, Soldier Love was a poet. He was not a musician. Uh, in short, I can say Anga Ari Nyanduri, and he was a comedian. So he was just giving melodies to his comedy. Uh, but I don't think could he, uh, that can what Soldier Love was doing uh, could define what he was a true musician. And this is why I'm saying people are getting carried away by these comedians or these clowns who just walk into the music business and do what they do. And now people, I don't know, maybe they are tired of listening to Trevor Dungu or each uh, generation. I don't know. But this social love syndrome, yes, my artist has got to my songs in studio. You know, a person will just come in. Uh, this is why uh, drug, uh, my drugs are because people also think that Soja Love was using drugs. And if you take drugs, we just come on the microphone and and you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about music. I'm talking about music. I'm talking about music. I'm talking about music. Go to the studio. I'm talking about music. Music again. So I just saw the love syndrome. You just have If you like to see, you can see what he. One of our co-founders, who is Ted Lama, who is a nigger, saw the love. Good, 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 good. Eh, who knows? I can wonder behind saw the love. Ah, that eh, I can wonder what Ted Zero was. Never know. And I can say ninety-eight percent of what saw the love was doing. Ah, uh, very negative. I think only a few percentage is positive. Muganda uh, magi tu muganda sama use what they are doing. Uh, this soldier love syndrome, ninety-eight percent is um, in a negative. In a neg in a is full of negative stuff. You know you are going to be roasted for saying this, <laughs> but it's the truth. People don't like the truth. Don't forget some political circles. Edu, if you speak the truth, you know that you are going to be the enemy of the people. <laughs> if you if you like uh could in the answer to what I'm trying to say, you could find out when Soldier Love was singing, people were laughing. Mm. How can you laugh to music? You're not supposed supposed to be laughing when somebody is, is singing, you know. You're supposed to dance, you know, you're supposed to move, you know, but people were not doing that. People were laughing. So which means there was something wrong there about Soldier Love singing. So called music. And and you know, it's only now that I'm looking at it closely and trying to understand that it's almost only in Zimbabwe where we do music where we will be laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Silent Killer right now. People, you know, when Silent Killer is singing, people laugh instead of jumping, instead of dancing. What kind of dance can you come up with for dancing a, a Silent Killer song? Look because at when the I look of, at uh, Van Choga. Those guys, they they come, they came on to the limelight not because of singing, they came, they came in because of Kujizora Zora Madota Neku Vramazi. So look at this young uh, young man on the couch, I love, uh, what he's doing now. He's trending, and you know, just listening to Couch Love song was now born Vramazi. So I think nobody will love it. <laughs> and when I look at the Nigerian music industry, it is very clear who is an artist, is a musician. You have got the Davidos, you have got the Whiskeys, you have got uh, the Thames, you have got Ayasta. They are singers. You know these guys, they are singers. What they do is they sing. And you have got comedians who actually sing, like you have Brother Shag. But you know this is a comedian who is yeah. singing, and his music is actually comedy. So when he's performing, people, they know that we are attending a comedy show. And those guys don't actually release albums. Yeah. They just release singles and they just spice up their comedy shows with a little bit of uh, singing or a little bit of uh, music performance. Unlike when a comedian releases an album year after year and people start to call that person a, a musician, I think that's unacceptable. 
So I think we need to reach a point where we can draw the line on who is a musician and who is not a musician. But by saying this, a lot of people are going to say, Sekuru Godo picture, you have got a pull them down syndrome. <laughs> the truth always uh, feels like that. Uh, it's not a pull them, uh, pull them uh, down syndrome. It's actually the truth and uh, it's hard to, to digest. That is the truth. <laughs> okay, I think let's now not talk about Zim Danso because okay. it will seem like we came here to bash Zim Danso. Yeah, that is true. I'm actually a fan of Zim Danso. Are you a fan of Zim, of Zim Danso? Yeah, I produce Zim Danso also. I sing Zim Danso songs. <laughs> <laughs> ah, your, 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 yeah, it's not make sure. Huh? It's like, yeah, I eat. <laughs> yes. I, I eat the, 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 yes, you know? I do. But I do a lot of gen- <laughs> other genres as well. Oh, let's talk about Zim Hip Hop just a little bit. What's your understanding of Zim Hip Hop? Uh, my understanding of Zim Hip Hop is like, uh, when we talk about the term Hip Hop, uh, I quickly take uh, uh, myself to United States of America. I think that's where it's, uh, it originated from. And I grew up uh, listening to Hip Hop music from America, and I was watching their videos Mm, the trending stories and all that stuff, the the, the the fashion and all that stuff. And I also found out that <clears throat> we adapted it also in Africa and all it's uh, this, uh, the hip hop culture is adopted all over the world. Uh, but uh, talking about uh, hip hop in Zimbabwe, uh, we adopted uh, the accent, the dressing and all that stuff. I used to wear those big jeans back in there and those uh, big t-shirts and everybody was doing it. Although the it's like it's changing or it's taking a turn, but uh, when it comes to Zim hop, uh, Zim hip hop music, I think uh, there's a lot uh, being done wrong uh, in the uh, hip hop uh, fraternity in Zimbabwe. So we'll look at it in greater detail. And there is a new trend which is now trending, which is called trip trip sungura or hip hop sungura. I think it was founded by Tanto Wave. Did you listen to something like that? Yeah, I've been listening to to that guy. Uh, he's he's really good. Uh, you know, when when it comes to mixing and coming up with melodies and all that stuff, yeah, it's good. I think uh, the, the 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 Zimbabwean guys are trying to come up with something, but I don't think uh, anything in Zimbabwe will ever beat Sungura or Rumbira music. Nothing will ever beat Sungura or Rumbira music. That is the best thing we can export, original. <laughs> <laughs> you should try a song that was released yesterday, by two days ago, by a guy who is called uh, Slim Fox. Slim Fox. They did a trip Sungura trick where they were mixing hip-hop. And Sungura, I think you should go and check it out. And you okay. say nothing beats Mbira music and Sungura. What about Jit? Yeah, jit music as well is fine. It's fine. It's, it's some of the the, uh, the long found uh, music genres in Zimbabwe. So it, it uh, those are the genres that we should have perfected over the years, and you know, but we have failed. Uh, it's like all the young generation is running away from uh, those uh, types of genres. Uh, they wanna, you know, look like they wanna. They are wannabes now. They wanna look like Americans. They wanna look like South Africans. They wanna look like Mexicans, Chinese. They don't want to look like <clears throat> the true Zimbabwean. So out there, when you export something and people who are going to pay, to pay big money, they want something that is authentic, something that is original from Zimbabwe, which uh, something not that you took from them, then you painted it yellow because it was white before, then you sell it back to them again. They are not going to buy that. Yeah, maybe that explains why you see most of our big musicians, when they are touring the world, they are going to sing to... Zimbabwean diaspora there. You would rather see South Africans or maybe South Africans just inviting a Zimbabwean artist to South Africa. It's very rare if a Zimbabwean artist is going to South Africa, it's going to be performing for Zimbabweans who are in South Africa, for Zimbabweans who are in UK. Quite different from the likes of Mapumo and yeah. Mutukuzi, who used it to perform for the people in German. Or let's just say even some Indigenous groups in Zimbabwe who are actually performing homegrown music. They are performing for 
Germans, <coughs> they are performing for Americans, they are performing for Swed Swedish people. And I think that really explains that. You know, I think because of our time, we have to leave this conversation here. What would be your last words before we will come next time with case study issues where we will be analyzing issues that will be happening on the ground? Okay, what I would like to say is uh, you guys, uh, if you want to be a player in the music industry, you want to be an artist, you want to be a producer, uh, you want to be a promoter, sponsor, a DJ, you need to know the definitions of those things so that you don't uh, get uh, hooked up in confusion and you end up bl uh, blaming the wrong people, you end up blaming the industry, you end up blaming um, uh, other people uh, instead of blaming your oneself. So it is very important to know those definitions so that you know your position and which other players you are going to be passing the ball uh, with. It is very important. The other thing I would like to also to talk about to say lastly is uh, uh, we are doing a lot of generalists but uh, it is manifesting itself that Zimbabwe now is nothing uh, to offer out there uh, because we are just rebranding stuff that we are stealing from other people then we steal it uh, uh, painted white then when it, then we paint it yellow then we, we try to resell it and when they just scratch a little bit you know listening a little bit they found out that no this thing is ours so we cannot pay a lot for this so this is why you see uh, after the death of um, uh, after the death of Oliver Mtukuzi and Mafumo who is now re retiring I'm not saying he died, he's now retiring, as I've heard of. Uh, there's no other major artists who are, who are ready to represent Zimbabwe. Uh, you can see, uh, if you look at Ja Prazer, uh, he's, he's, he's doing like a butterfly. Sometimes he do this, sometimes he do that, sometimes. Uh, when you look at people like Mafumo and Mtukuzi, they never swayed uh, from their part. So it is very important. We still need young people to go back and, you know, take up the spears, uh, and uh, forge war again uh, by defending our local uh, uh, local uh, founded music in Zimbabwe. Yes, young people like Jema and Felinandi and all those type of things. Thank you so much, Sekrugudo. And with that, we are out.